Aquarius singles, welcome. Doing your singles reading now. This is for the first half of October, 1st to the 15th, we'll call it. Um, I call this Meet the Soulmate. It's an always positive reading because uh, the question is, Spirit, can you reveal to us the perfect match right now uh, to meet uh, our Aquarius here uh, in a soul connection? That'll be the soulmate that's most beneficial for you. So it's not going to pull up any energy of the person that's going to be your next X problem. So if you see the three of swords or something, it's not that good. No one's going to break up with you. So <clears throat> I've already laid this out. I had some technical difficulties, but I, I want to scrap it. Um, kind of a traditionalist like that with the Taurus in the, uh, in the ninth house, I think is how it goes. Um, so I'm just going to go back into it. Um, this is a reading where I use I call the four pillars, which is emotional connection here. Two cards. Two cards here is for intellectual connection. Two cards here is looking at their sexual and love connection. Here, lifestyle and core values connection. And I think of that as the four pillars in a relationship that we really need to be most, um, you know, the best chance of success and to be uh, the most aligned uh, in a, at a very basic level. And so that's how I look at them. Over in the emotional position, I often pick up the moon. Right out of the boot uh, comes out as strength. Well, it's Leo moon. So that's like uh, hard. So it kind of makes me feel, it's like everything I want is look look at that strength card there. Um, and I've had experience at Leo moons. Uh, so very bright, uh, they have a really, usually a great smile. They kind of really will light up the room. It's not that Leo energy of look at me, look at me. It's just warmth. The heart of Leo comes out. And, you know, they might hug a lot. And they might people might feel warm around them. And um, they might even be a little protective. I get the feeling with this person's story, pet, significant, childhood, pet, significant. Probably still are, but something in childhood. Um, because of the Knight of Cups here, uh, I'm thinking about um, that probably uh, even though it's a fire moon I got the feeling as I went through this before that it's in the the moons in the fourth house which would make Leo uh, probably ruling their fourth house you can't tell for sure but uh, uh, very well could be so uh, their moon would their Leo moon be a little more emotional than you might normally think because it's not a real emotional moon the biggest thing with the Leo moon is positive, positive, positive. Bad thing, they, and they're lying, so you can't drag them. They're not going to do it. They don't do the shadow stuff. They're a, a real uh, Leo moon um, energy, and it's just not going to go there. It doesn't like the dark. You know, they typically they don't like dark movies. You know, the, this Leo moons are the ones, because the moon's what you need to feel safe and secure. You ain't going to like sit and watch people for two hours do something kind of dark and gloom. It's just like not their thing. Um, I count that kind of as a problem because to me, you know, it's like such a strong impulse. <laughs> not so much the darkness, just to go inside and do the shadow work. And it's like in a relationship, like, it's hard to imagine. It's all oh, because it's never perfect. So you got to like deal with it. It's like, I'm li I mean, they just don't want to talk about it, you know. It's like, um, so if you, but if you like positive... Uh, that's what you got, but the fact that it's in like a water house, maybe down on the high sea, uh, down, you know, the moon is, rules the high sea, so it would go really well together there, but it would definitely give it a, a cancer flavor, you know, maybe cancer's their fourth house, <laughs> I don't know, uh, that could have some, and has some trine to their Leo moon, but that would give it a cancer flavor too, but in some way it's like this cancer flavored moon. Uh, other than the moon's ruled by cancer. So I just think like like if uh, you were to read typical things about a Leo moon, it may not so much relate to a lot of it. Then if you were to read things about this person uh, and read things about what it means to have a, a cancer moon, um, the person might relate kind of more to the cancer moon stuff. Um, but that's why the aspects make a lot of difference and the houses make a huge difference, you know why you need to have all the times. But then Taurus comes to mind for the sun. And my thought was, in their natal, you might see the sun uh, square the moon, you know. 
Um, and with the Eight of Wands, too, they have a busy mind here. And look, strength in the hair font. This is like their basic character, their sun and moon energy. They are fixed, you know. Um, from the time your person was a child, they knew who they were. Like, they never went through the angst that I did, and I think a lot of us did. Where am I? Who am I? What's it all about, Alfie? They would have probably had a certainty about them. Um, they'd be like incredibly grounded person too. Um, so they might have that feeling about them of just being connected and grounded. Um, that would um, possibly appeal to you. Um, you know, a lot of Aquarians have, have an Earth in the chart, Taurus in the chart. That kind of thing. So, um, boy, if you had your Venus on your sun, um, that, that would be pretty sweet. So, um, moving on to there, um, other than a pet thing, picking up on two, the childhood been very good childhood, um, just pleasant, um, no problems, which I keep saying is a little bit unusual. You know, that's probably less than definitely 50% of the population going to tell any kind of story like that. Seems mainly and cynical. But it just seems like so many people had, had a rough childhood. Um, but they, they remember theirs fondly. Um, not a problem for them. And, you know, they're going to be like a traditionalist. They're going to be a home, family, country, patriot probably. Um, and someone that, uh, if they have a belief with the hair pond here, um, it, it's an absolute belief. Like... They're really, uh, as an adult, I mean, they're an adult, and they may have went through some process. They got sun square moons, what's all about. They were really making hard adjustments all through early life. Um, but by the time their convictions, they're all about convictions, I uh, get this person. Once they set the convictions, good luck. I mean, you burn them at the stake, this person. I mean, they're going to be like, nope, I do not renounce my belief. I believe this, whatever it is. Boom, and they're going to be solid. So another thing that energy I get, because it's your person, this is a triggery, but this it's true of anyone, don't try to change anyone, right? Uh, if you get together and you change, because that was the whole purpose of getting together, and that's major kana and God and out of your hands, that's cool. But to go in wanting to change someone, that's insanity. But this person, good luck. <laughs> it's like, it shouldn't even just give that vibe, like, I don't say it's in any way obnoxious, cool. They're probably kind of Venetian. They're uh, probably charming and, like I said, warm. And they're probably going to feel really good, uh, make you feel disarmed and welcomed and safe. I feel like you'll feel safe with anyone, with this person, so have a feeling of safety. If there was a, a disaster and there was a small group of you, you know, this person would be like the rock of the group, I can guarantee you. Um, so and probably rise up just by how solid they were. So we move on to the sexual positions and now we have a Taurus and we have a Nine of Cups and a Knight of Swords. So I think you might have an Aquarius Mars here to go with your Taurus. And a Pisces Venus. And this is a, I call it the coming at you card in this deck, the uh, illuminated tarot deck, aerial visions, coming at you, coming at you. Um, so strong sexual uh, nature um, with Aquarius um, would go well with my Sagittarius Mars. Um, Probably not so well with my uh, Venus and uh, Scorpio, um, but someone be really direct. Like, uh, my Larry walking around naked. They just don't think it's any big deal. That just a human body, and what's a big deal? Um, very open and honest about their feelings about sex. Experience is not hung up at all. I get with this uh, way they express, um, and. They're probably very open-minded, you know, um, like, so, like, if you ever wanted to try something, you've never really had the balls to ask someone to try, now's your chance, <laughs> this is your soulmate, just saying, sex is a thing, 
Nine of Cups, so you got a Venus and Pisces where Venus is exalted. Um, this is just like a wonderful person, honestly. Um, they are traditional or traditionalist, like I said, home, family, mother, uh, protect, energy comes in, uh, tradition, values, tradition. They run the flag up even type of person, um, but they got nothing but love, you know, with this uh, Venus and Pisces. Um, so I, I got to say, though, remember this is your soulmate. I don't mean this to be triggery, but whatever happened past is the past. But with this Nine of Cups and the Knight of Swords and the Pisces, Venus, and the Mars and Aquarius, it's very loving and uh, open-minded and loving kind of energy. But it's exactly what might be, just would be no big deal to them to have multiple partners at one time or... You know, they just wouldn't see sex as such a big deal, uh, like exactly how, it, you know, they wouldn't necessarily uh, be monogamous, that energy, you know. Um, they might kind of value freedom, you know, sexually too. Uh, but again, if this is your person, it's going to work with you, however that works out. Um, because this person would be very open about it. Like, definitely... Usually I would say, we don't really know about all this because, you know, first date, maybe, no, they're going to go there. They're going to, or just ask because then they'll go there for sure. Like, what's your sex history? <laughs> I think, like, you could kind of approach them clinically like that, too. I'd say, mm-hmm, that's amazing. So what is your sex history there? <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, well, uh, well, let's lay it right out there. Um, so I say in terms of love and all that, you know, you want someone with experience. If you were hiring someone for a job that was an important job, and hello, a relationship, and then love, and then sex is a pretty important job, when you want to hire someone who has a lot of experience, when you want to hire a greenhorn to do this very important job. So this person, keep in mind, um, they know what a man or woman looks like, and when they choose you, I mean, it means something. You know, they're not a wallflower. They, they don't have any sense of like, oh, I mean, my God, you know, the Leo and Taurus here. They know they're beautiful. They're confident. They don't go around worrying. They got the nine of cups here, okay? They're, they're holding themselves, emotionally holding themselves. So what's the huge advantage of all of that? When they choose you, it's because there's something about you. You know, it's not something they need or want or desire. It's like they don't roll like that. You know, so when they come at you, they're going to tell you why. And it's like, they're going to get you. That's what it's going to be. It's like, they're going to get you. Not like, come and get you. Like, understand you. Connect with you. Maybe like you've never felt before. And then once they connect, you know, it's a, a kind of a lock, I think, for them. Uh, and they would really need that connection, too, with the Nine of Cups, Pisces. Um, also with them too I would say uh, any kind you can rule out any kind of dysfunctional codependent relationship dynamic not how they roll if they're involved with you then you're not like that because if they wouldn't be involved with you and now with the high priestess in their last column here representing the core values and the lifestyle over the five of pentacles Okay, what I get from this is this person, what they do for a living is like a social worker. Probably they have their degree, like a master's in social work, if that anything. Um, and they do something, They uh, you could go a lot of ways with that. They could do counseling. They could do counseling with children or uh, handicapped people or battered women or, you know, just personal counseling. Um, they could work in a, as a school counselor. Uh, there's corporate uh, um, positions now for this stuff. Um, but there's someone that is involved. That's what this high priestess over the pentacles, um, and this is, I think, their Venus in uh, Pisces. I've been there, too, with a person um, several times. And they, they want uh, to just love everyone. You know, they really do and their heart's kind of wide open. And so this is them and their, what they do with their life. Um, 
you know, I mean, it literally could be they run a, a established and, and run a animal uh, tr a center, you know, where there's help for animals, um, that kind of thing too. Uh, but they're kind of like that dedicating their life and having this empathy, <laughs> something biting me. Never know, Mexico. Uh, probably a scorpion. You know how they bite you in the back, right? Uh, um, so um, everything's in a reading. So <laughs> um, yeah, so with the high priestess, they'd bring to this like this really deep uh, inner kind of understanding um, to it and like complete dedication. So also what they do for a living, I'll tell you, I mean, it's something they're completely dedicated to. It's like, it's like they might not even get paid. I don't know how that would work. It's like, but they would probably say, like, or they might say, you know, I, I would literally do this even if I won the lottery and didn't need the money, you know, because this is what I love doing. And it's because it's something where they're uh, very much committed to helping others, okay? So I think that gives you a pretty good idea, Aquarius. And uh, thank you guys. Hope you give me a like, thumbs up. It helps a lot. Please do comment. Comments help a lot. Damn scorpions. And um, um, let me, uh, give me a subscription if you can manage it. That really would help.